Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football, Newcastle and Chelsea in crisis in the Premier League. I don't think there can be any doubts of that at all. I suppose the short question is, can either of those clubs reverse the crisis quick enough to rescue a season that is... is, is is, is, is dropping at a, at a very, very quick rate. Newcastle have conceded seven goals in their last two games, losing to Goodison Park and Spurs comprehensively and deservedly. And of course, Chelsea losing um, again today against Everton um, and, and comprehensively beaten at Old Trafford, of course, last Wednesday. So two losses in a row. Chelsea can't even afford it as well. Ch the thing about Chelsea is they can't afford it. Newcastle have got the Champions League on Wednesday and what a game that's going to be. And I think Newcastle as well are suffering the opposite of what Chelsea have got. Chelsea have almost got too many players. Yes, they've got an injury crisis, but as I was saying on the watch along, Chelsea remind me of a Christmas dinner without roast potatoes. Oh, don't try and con me with fantastic turkey and gravy and cranberry sauce and Brussels sprouts and carrots and red cabbage and parsnips and pigs in blankets. Where's the roast potatoes? It's not a Christmas dinner without the roast potatoes. And that Chelsea team, it doesn't matter how many good defenders you've got, how many good midfielders you've got, it's not a proper team without a proper striker. If you can't score goals, you're not going to win games. And I think that's Chelsea's big problem. They've got, they're just missing something. Whereas I think with Newcastle, they just don't have the depth. I look at their bench. I know they had Callum Wilson back and Longstaff today, but they don't have enough on that bench to rotate. And we saw it against Man United. They played us off the park when they beat us a week ago, but they couldn't make any substitutions. And the same thing has gone and happened again today. They're just running on empty. Trippier, absolutely low battery. That they, they are. They've got, they've got that warning sign keeps flashing up on the screen. Low battery FC for Newcastle. Whereas it's scroll down FC for Chelsea because we can't even see him there. But looking at the league table, um, look, Newcastle have got a run of games they can win. Um, they, they, they don't really play anybody, I don't think, in the top four for the next four games. So they've got some winnable games. And at St. James's Park, they're always going to be good. They're like a Jackal and Hyde team, um, Newcastle, aren't they? At home, I think they're fantastic. And I think they'll beat AC Milan on Wednesday. And they might go through, if, if things go their way, to the next stage of the Champions League. I certainly think they'll be in Europe in some shape or form, whether it's Thursday night football or not. And they have to be. Newcastle have got to be in Europe in February. They can't not be. And, and if they're not, 7th place, 26 points. They're 7 points off Man City in 4th place. For, uh, already, that top 4 looks unattainable for the Brightons and the Newcastles and the Manchester Uniteds. It already looks like those teams are fighting for 5th and 6th. Spurs clinging on with that win today. But the top 4 are starting to move away. Um, and I think Man City will 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 get into a title race. So you're not catching Man City. So really, it's Villa on 35 points. That's nine points for Newcastle to make up. So it's top four is looking very very unlikely for Newcastle. Look, maybe Eddie Howe won't be in a job next year. Maybe he'll be, maybe have an England job. It just depends on what Newcastle's ambition is next summer. If they're not in the Champions League and they're not in Europe, they might say that's a step backwards. We've got the money to take a step forwards. That's for the future. Eddie Howe's done a fantastic job at Newcastle. There's no doubt about that. But they are in a crisis because they were a club that last year got top four deservedly. And this year, they're not dealing with it. And a lot of that is about squad depth. But also, away from home, I didn't see the Newcastle that I see at home. They're not moving the ball as well. They're not getting at teams as much. And, and Spurs absolutely annihilated them today in the way that they played. So I think Newcastle still have an opportunity to turn this season around. They've got January, which I think is massive for them. Will they tap into that Saudi Arabian loan market? Will they bring a David De Gea in? Because I tell you what, if Nick Pope's out till April, you've got to go and get a goalkeeper. You have to do that. Depravka, he ain't good enough. Um, will they do that? Let's wait and see. But they have got those options in January. For Chelsea, I, I, I look... Again, their next four games on paper are potentially winnable at certainly two or three of them. But they're not even on that page. They're on 19 points. 19 points. They're 11 points off Tottenham in fifth. Chelsea are not getting back into this race because the title is too competitive. We are seeing teams lose and then win and then win and then lose. And, and Chelsea are just not going to have that consistency this season. I don't know what Chelsea do this season 
because you can already see next season being this season where they haven't got European football again. That's going to be two seasons in a row with no European football. And yes, I know there's the FA Cup and there's the Carabao Cup. And at some point, I think Chelsea will get better. And I think Chelsea can get better. But I think, they've, look, if you're going to spend a billion pounds in a year, go and spend a hundred and something million pounds on Victor Osman because they need a striker. You play in a team with good midfielders and good defenders and no one who can score a goal, it mentally drags you down. You go into games and you're like, if we concede, we're going to lose because we're not going to score. You put a good goal, goal scorer in your team and you're like, we might not even have to play well because he, he might score a goal out of nothing. And that's the, that's the mental block that Chelsea have got at the moment. You can see the lack of confidence in the players that they know they're not scoring goals and they know the margin for error is small. But if you've got a goal scorer, it suddenly changes. Chelsea need to go and buy that goal scorer in January. It might not be enough to rescue the season, but at least they bed in for next season because it's embarrassing for Chelsea Football Club in December to already know next August you won't be in Europe again. They're going to need a minor miracle. They're not going to come from 12th in the league to 5th. It's just not going to happen. It's too big a gap. Um, this season, it's just not going to happen. You're not to do to to make, to close an eleven point gap and get fifth place. You need to go and be winning six, seven, eight games in a row, just to close the gap. And you're not going to do that this season because there's too many teams that will beat you. It's a competitive league. Look at what Villa have done to Man City. Look at what um, Tot West Ham did to Tottenham. Look at what Bournemouth did to Man United. Look at what Newcastle have, have hap had happen at Everton. Uh, Brighton have been held to a draw by Burnley. Everybody's taking points off everybody, so Chelsea aren't going to close the gap. The best thing that Chelsea can do is put things in place quicker than as quick as possible to be competitive again. Um, but they're in crisis, Chelsea. There's there's no two ways about it. And uh, I don't think Pochettino should be sacked, though. Um, I think the media um, need to wake up to this league being competitive. It's ridiculously competitive, and there's just this movement to sack managers. But Eddie Howe shouldn't be being sacked. Ten Hag shouldn't be being sacked. Potts shouldn't be sacked. I think that all three of those managers have got different challenges going on, but all three of those managers have a reason to be given more time. And I think that this season is ridiculously challenging when things aren't going your way. You can lose a few games on the bounce. January transfer window probably looks more promising for Newcastle and Chelsea, though, because United don't normally do anything. But uh, all three clubs are in crisis at the moment. I personally wouldn't sack any of the coaches. I think that uh, Pochettino should probably be the one at more risk. I mean, it's not acceptable whether you're a new manager or not. Ange is a new manager. He's in fifth place. He's got injuries and he hasn't got the players that, uh, that Pochettino has got. And he lost the striker. Pochettino's come in, more investment, better squad. And he's 11 points behind Spurs. So if anyone needs to be sacked, it's Pochettino. But I wouldn't do it because you can't keep sacking managers. Chelsea have done, had three managers in 12 months. They've got to stick with it and uh, see what happens. And uh, Arteta's the lesson, isn't it? Don't listen to the, the out movements from the media and everybody else. Uh, give it a bit of time. Uh, get your comments in below, though. What do you think? Do you think Chelsea should be looking at sacking a manager? Do you think Eddie Howe's job could be in, in doubt? Are Newcastle and Chelsea in a crisis or do you think that they can turn this season around? Why are they in this crisis? Get your comments in below and about Man United as well and I'll speak to you on the next one.